Greetings, all shard. Vixen here, and today is Saturday, the uh, 22nd, 2017, and it's probably about 9 o'clock in the morning, so this is a nice early vlog. I have to do all the other stuff to it, so but it should get out here on Saturday. Taking the animation out of it, um, as much as that kind of makes me sad because it's harder for me to get my animation done, but getting that animation part of it out of the first part of the vlog, uh, really makes, uh, the vlog, the editing and processing part of that vlog done much quicker, and it's actually probably help more or less, it's less stressful, it really is. Um, but maybe some of you like the animation, but I'll be doing short systems and, I'm working on um, a couple of different little projects right now. So lots of intros. I'm doing all the intros for both Shard Vixen's Magnificent channel and, um, I said that right, Shard Vixen's Magnificent channel. There we go. <laughs> um, and uh, all the other ones too, like me and Bobby Joe do um, Minecraft together, so I have that one all set up. Uh, this vlog might just be a tad bit long because there's some stuff in the beginning I want to talk about and then we're going to move right on to my vlog. First of all, uh, I'm heavily into doing the uh, No Man's Sky ARG Waking Titan right now. So um, I've been spending a lot of time on that. That's why I haven't done a lot of animation this week. Um, and it's in its phase two right now. So if any of you are like that or whatever, I'm doing it with the um, M NMS Love Group. And then... Um, you know, also, the PS4 should be here this weekend, but I can't promise that I'll be up and playing any games uh, right away because the amount of money to buy the PS4 kind of denates the money for having any for games. So, um, I'm supposed to have my No Man's Sky still, but, uh, and um, access to some of the newer games through a friend's PSN as family, but we'll see because one never knows how that's supposed to work. They say it works, but it doesn't. Anyway, today is all about food addiction. Now, some people don't believe there's such a thing as food addiction, and that's fine. They probably don't have one. This is why they don't believe in it. I have craved sugar since I was a little girl. Um, I was on a very strict diet as a child because uh, I had a family member who was hyperactive, and instead of giving him the drugs to slow him down, we did it through diet. Um, and then for the most part, it probably worked a lot. Um, I'm a little s s skeptical, I'm having a hard time with that word, remember processing problems. I'm a little skeptical of um, food diets and food things. Even though I have a food addiction, um, I do know that people who are men have mental health issues, um, anxiety, depression, um, hyperactivity, crave sugar. And, and it's not just processed sugar. It's just sweet. Sweet is the thing. Now, there's probably a few of you out there who are depressed and say, Oh, no, when I'm depressed, I crave salt. And that's fine. There are always exceptions to the rule. But I have read a lot of articles on it and um, have interviewed quite a few children. And most of the children I ever worked for, uh, worked with, not worked for, but worked with, that um, their parents said the same thing. They would steal to get sugar. Like <laughs> one little kid... Uh, would eat uh, sugar cubes, just eat them, or um, a very favorite that my dad really liked was, sorry for the phone, I'm waiting for my son Bobby Joe to call me, so it's gonna put it under my leg, maybe it'll be not as loud when it texts me, um, it, uh, uh, I had met people that eat like lettuce, you take a slice of lettuce, and you put a, uh, you put sugar in it, and then you roll it up, and you eat it that way, uh, that's a, a, that's one, sorry, itchies today again. Uh, that's one from way back. My grandmother used to do that too when she, she said sugar was hard to come by and that was considered a treat to eat it between lettuce. Another one is bread and butter and sugar. I don't know how many people I used to eat those. Bread and butter, sugar sandwiches. And now that sounds slightly gross. I don't know why. Anyway, so, um, when I turned about 16 or so, my parents divorced. And the whole house went into a state of chaos, and the diet was completely forgotten. And it's funny because, whereas I was on a controlled diet as a, from zero, uh, well, from five to sixteen, because my brothers, uh, my family, my brothers younger than me. <clears throat> uh, think about what I was saying. All right, sometimes so from 
from age five to age 16, my meals were set out I, and my diet was set. My, my lunches were made for school and I was taught to eat this way, this way, this way. You know, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and maybe some snacks in between. Okay, candy was rare, fast food was rare, um, all those really great delicious foods that we shouldn't eat were rare. Then my parents got a divorce and um, at the age of about 16, I was like uh, not only doing drugs, but I wasn't eating well. I stopped eating that way. I stopped eating in that format. In fact, I became, I was classified, diagnosed as anorexic, but it, for me it wasn't about starving myself or because I looked fat it was about control I wanted I had very little control in my life when I was 16 um, and I needed some type of control and eating is one of the easiest ways to have control whether I ate or didn't eat or whatever so when I did eat it was usually not very good stuff so um, I had a big run with drinking a lot of Pepsi um, Coca-Cola uh, RC Colas was another big favorite of mine um, Twinkies, ate a lot of Twinkies. They used to serve these ice cream um, cups, um, like they were supposed to be a milkshake, but they were so thick, like Wendy's, that they were really f called Frosties at my school. And for a buck, you could get that. And I ate a lot of those, and I ate a lot of ice cream sandwiches. And for two years, that was pretty much my diet: sugar, sugar, and more sugar. And the more sugar I ate, the more I craved it. When I wasn't eating, like I'd go through bouts where I would take cross tops which are um, amphetamines that are used for, primarily used for asthma. So if you hung out with people that had asthma, you could get those really good without having to pay for them. And so the morning routine was Pepsi, cross tops, and then through the after day, I just eat sweet things because I craved the sugar. Not because I was hungry, but because I craved the sugar. Then I quit, the, and marijuana helped with that too. I, I would eat a lot of garbage because I would then smoke the pot throughout the day, even though I was wired for sound, I'd smoke the pot and then that would slow me down a little bit and then it would cause, increase my appetite that I didn't have. And so that was, and that was pretty much a, a diet routine for a while. And then when I turned about, well, 18, I, I quit a lot of drugs, I quit taking uh, lots of drugs around 17 to 18 years old. There's a spider going just cruising on down through my house here, itty bitty one. Up, oh, got him. All right, <laughs> we'll have to edit that too. Um, and then, um, so then from that, about 21, I, I guess I probably, I started to eat better, but I still was eating a lot of um, garbage food, you know. Um, and when I talk about garbage food, it's not just fast food. It's just cheap food that when you're poor, you can afford. I mean, you can't really afford the better food. We struggle here in my house with that because um, when my daughter was born, I was 27, and I, I tried to feed her well, but um, another issue that I had as a child was a sensory issue. I had a really hard time with things that were um, looked a certain way, felt a certain way, taste a certain way. And I still have foods that I cannot eat. I cannot eat Brussels sprouts, even though sometimes they're in my salad or something like that. I know they're there, and I don't like them, and they make my stomach sick. And yes, it's probably that whole, I think about it, therefore it happens kind of thing. But it doesn't matter. I don't like them, and it's funny. Sometimes I smell them, and I crave them. But when I eat them, they make me sick. Um, I have, I pretty much can eat, used to eat anything, and then now with the medication I have to watch what I eat because it makes me sick all the time um okay so which and and the medication gains weight so I don't lose weight so interesting enough you would have thought on a diet of sugar for probably four years or so I would have gained weight but when I was 18 I was 98 pounds which is why I was diagnosed I think it was a little lighter than that I think it was about 95 that's why they diagnosed me as anorexic and told me I had a weird body image problem I kept telling them I didn't but you know people who are smarter than you supposedly know more about you um even if you don't that's not what's going on so you just learn to go okay 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 and they give you that diagnosis and then they start teaching you to eat and it's like pff, whatever and then um when I went in the military um I don't know 
I get, those dates get really confused for me, but it's somewhere around being 21, 22 years old. I went into the military. It might even be later than that. And um, in the Army. And uh, again, once I started exercising and I worked in the kitchen and I got to eat a little better than lots of, of the uh, military people did, uh, I uh, was, when I was released from it due to an injury that was acquired before I went into the military and they didn't catch it, um, which is actually what I'm having problems with now, so it's probably the fibromyalgia uh, and the shoulder problem. Uh, and in fact, it was a shoulder problem, just a different aspect of that. So I, um, what happened is that I uh, got sent out, but I was at that weight, weight around 23, 25, I was about 90, 90 to 100 pounds. Um, my average, and we'll talk about my body image on another vlog, but my, my weight is um, probably, I'm about 100 or so pounds overweight now. And I gained most of it. I gained 50 pounds of it in um, the first um, first year of taking my medication. So last year, I went from 200 to 240 really quick. Anyway, uh, so we're talking about the food addiction now. So in the food addiction issue, so my daughter was born and I had sensory issues. She had sensory issues. She wouldn't eat a lot of stuff. So um, we ate things that weren't bad, but they weren't great for you. Like hamburger helper, probably. Lots of people eat hamburger helper. Casseroles, um, those pre-made meals that you buy, the meals in the can, the meals frozen, all those stuff that are very cheap and easy to make and um, people are like, oh, even I can't afford that. You know, big bucket, lots of white rice and cheese, stuff like that. High carbohydrates and high sugar. Um, and then I was a little, and I ate so much when I was pregnant because I craved so much sugar, sugar and protein. Those are usually the two things I crave all the time. I'm anemic, so the protein makes sense. I'm craving the iron, so I have to. But I, I crave like red meat. Arr, arr, arr. Being a fox, I guess that makes sense. Um, and then sugar, though, still all the way down. Soda, soda is my one bane. I just I will go on bouts where I don't drink soda for a while, and then I drink it. But why talk about a food addiction? So I'm almost getting there. With my son, when I got pregnant with him, 13 years later after my daughter. I was a little smarter, careful, and knew that it was my brain that was making me eat and kind of slowed that process down. But what happened, and then I went, when he, after he was born, around about the time he was, I would say, probably a year or two years, I went on a diet. I changed the whole way I ate. Um, didn't eliminate the sugar because I still craved it, but I um, put a, a very rigorous jumping, a jump rope routine into every day I jump roped and counted my jump ropes, increased them one more, and um, I jumped roped all the time, and because I, I couldn't run, um, which is funny, I could jump rope, but I couldn't run, and but I, and I lost, I went down, I w was 200 and went down to 170. Um, weight doesn't mean much to me, but it probably would help you guys have a better idea of how my weight has fluctuated a lot. So, but it was really hard staying on that heat eating um, thing. I thought about food all the time. I thought about sugar all the time. I was constantly wanting to eat sugar all the time. The diet allowed me to have treats, but I had to count the calories. So it was only allowed a certain amount of calories in that sugar, that sugar with a lot of sugar, even the carbohydrates. I had to watch it all. So I got really depressed uh, somewhere after my, uh, I'd have to say at some point, right? before I joined a guild, I think, a renaissance guild, um, and I fell off the diet, and then I just went back to eating, and I never really looked back, I just, and my, I just kept steadily gaining weight, <laughs> and then I'd lose it, and then I'd gain weight, in the winter I gain weight, in the summer I lose it, I don't know if that's true now with the medication, but, so that was what was going on, so that's my history in eating, but what I wanted to talk about was food addiction, but I had to give you a history of my eating. So all through my life, since I was small, um, at five was when we stopped eating stuff that was processed. It was unprocessed food, all of it. Very natural, only honey, brown sugar, um, stuff like that. 
that's all we used. I learned to cook with it. It it was hard then. It's a little easier now. Um, but I'm thinking a lot of my pains and stuff started about the same time I quit eating well. Um, I do believe there's a lot of research out there. The problem is, is some research is biased. I mean, there's always biased research because... You write, you write something and you have an idea and you have a hypothesis and a theory and you need to support that. So that's the bias there. But I think there's even more bias because um, people will only take pieces and part of the research and decide that that's like the law in that concept. So here's what I have found. I went on a one month gluten free uh food. I didn't change any other way I ate. I just eliminated as much gluten as I possibly could. I did not eliminate things that were made in factories with gluten because I'm not allergic to gluten as far as we know. I mean, it doesn't make me sick. So to me, that's allergic because I could deal with the skin stuff because I have skin stuff all the time, as you can maybe see. Um, but I eliminated and I found that it improved my face. But that's all I saw. I didn't, I didn't see any improvement in it any other way. Um, the medication I'm taking, the gadapentin, gadapentin, I think is what it is, uh, decreases my appetite. But when I do eat, it causes me to do this thing that happens to a lot of children and adults who um, don't have good regulation in their brain. It causes me to want to shovel food in. Like, my brain just automatically is like, oh, food, Blah. and I, I eat it, like, I, and I, I don't even notice I'm doing it until I, just, like, realize I've eaten a whole bowl of salad, and you say, oh, salad's not bad for you, but salad is bad for you, if you eat salad and stuff in it and salad dressing, and you're eating over three or four cups of salad, that's, that's not good for you, you can't <laughs> go into a buffet and you eat, that's not really good for you either, um, at least not for me. It's not good for me, I guess, is how I should say it. It's not good for me. Research shows it's not good for all of us, but you guys can eat however you want, um, and you might not even care or believe. But the food addiction part of it, okay, is that I will, without thinking, open up a bag of M&Ms and eat the whole bag of M&Ms, and at the end of it go, I just ate a whole bag of M&Ms. And, or I will... Not be drinking soda for three or four weeks and then all of a sudden go in my kitchen and open a can of soda. I don't even like the way it tastes, but I still drink it. Um, that's the addiction part of it. Uh, I think about sugar all the time. Um, I'm a very obsessive type of personality. I, I get into things and I, I get stuck on them for a little while and then I have to move on because they'll drive me mad. Um, but... The food addiction part of it is the hardest part to get over. I cannot eat gluten, no problem, but, but though you have to think about it. I, I don't eat pizza. I don't eat um, Chinese food, which is one of my favorites because of the noodles. I could eat other stuff. Um, I don't. A lot of people don't eat Chinese food because of the MSO, but I don't really care about that. The, the research there, too, is kind of it's anything that's foreign going in your body is probably not good for your body. But... Um, you can't really get true organic unless they're growing it in a hot house. Um, I'm going to tell you because you can't just go from growing regular stuff after years of using um, pesticides and fertilizers and, into the dirt, and then and then also the air is not very clean. So organic just means they didn't add the pesticides or whatever, but the food's not can't necessarily be guaranteed to be any healthier than stuff that's not grown that way. I mean, that's just can't because there's still stuff, residues. Grapes are one of those things. Grapes take uh, flavor from everything around them. And good grapes um, that have that really good grape taste are probably, um, you, you can try it. Buy a regular set and an organic set and see if you taste anything different. Um, if you taste something different on the other side, on the organic, then they were raised someplace different than the ones that weren't. Um, <clears throat> so, food addiction. It's just a really long blog in that aspect. Um, for me, it is one of the hardest addictions to quit. Um, I quit smoking, quit drinking, I quit marijuana, I quit, um, a lot of things. I quit reading, com buying comic books, I quit spending money on things like that. 
My spending money though is another one I have. I have, you know, if I had money, I'd spend it all the time. Help, I'd probably give it away. But um, yes, the food addiction is hard, and it adds to it when I'm depressed. Um, right now, I've been kind of like if you look at my mental health state, which we've already talked about. This is the baseline, and everybody who's just average is on a baseline. And on the baseline, we go high, we go low. Okay, I've been probably running like this. Not so many highs, but a lot of lows. Uh, but they're lows that are really low on that baseline. And most people do this. They have a very little. A few people get down here, but, you know, on an average, we, we do this. So we, we run along that baseline. Um, and the food addiction adds to it because it's, it's a severe problem. When I'm really not feeling good, I'm thinking about cakes and pies and strawberry shortcakes. Um, when I was pregnant, I ate a strawberry cheesecake, big, huge one with big, giant strawberries on it. And it was given to me at my baby shower and no one showed up. So I ate the whole thing. I don't know if that was in direct correlation to nobody showing up and feeling bad or me just wanting to eat the whole thing. So, um, I'm sure some of you out there have food addiction issues and you're perfectly fine in talking to me about it. You're perfectly fine in saying it's all pahooey. I don't believe it. You just lack control. It's true. I do lack control in a lot of things. Then I have a lot of control in other things. Um, you might say, oh, I believe this, but you should try this. I, I don't really try diets. <laughs> I have hour enough time. So right now I've been gluten free again for three weeks. Um, off and on I've had, for the most part, I've been gluten free for three weeks. I had like fast food, um, really bad fast food at um, uh, 7-Eleven. <laughs> and uh, a little convenience store here. And it was, uh, I thought they were corn tortillas, but I think they were flour tortillas. So that was probably my bad. I didn't know what it was. So I, you have to be careful when you're on a weird store restriction of diets to make sure that everything's not out there so if t the goal is to get on one that has no processed sugar i don't know that i'll ever make it but we'll see because um part of fibromyalgia is this huge amount of inflammation in your body and foods cause inflammation because what happens is when your body doesn't feel well it hits that thing so in an auto it's kind of like an auto Immune, immune deficiency problem. My body isn't regulating its inflammation well because of my face and because of things going on in my body. So it's like, it's kind of that weird, I'm on a hamster wheel. It's going around and around and around. So I decided I'd like to stop the hamster wheel and I'm trying gluten free. Gluten free, I've read that that's a good one. I don't know if I'll get to dairy free. I, I really like cheese. Um, <laughs> um, and then, uh, Sugar-free, for sure, is a, another one. And then um, vegan. If you can get to vegan, apparently that's the best thing. I don't know if I'll get there. I don't. I, I eat meat every once in a while, so I don't know that I could do that. I don't have a problem eating meat. I understand where meat comes from, so it doesn't really... I don't feel bad about the animals because they're not my animals. If they were my animals, I'd probably feel bad about them. I don't know. If you're hungry, I guess you wouldn't feel bad about things. Anyway, so... Um, Really quick, so food addiction is a very hard addiction to get over, and um, I, I have sympathy for anyone who has addiction of any kind, and especially a food one. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about. It might be a little boring for some people, might not, um, but that's the way it is, because that's part of my life, and I will catch you all on the flip side. I'm out of here.